It's been a huge week for news right around the country. Let's get to our panel tonight. First up, Pauline Hanson's One Nation Chief of Staff, James Ashby, and Radio 2GB host, my old mate, Luke Grant. James and Luke, welcome. We'll get on to the, the rise in anti-Semitism in a moment that has Jewish Australians terrified. I actually took a call last night from one of Australia's most prominent Jewish figures, which I don't think it's fair to name that person, but I can tell you they were absolutely rattled about what's going on. But, James, first... You saw what I said there about renewables and these impossible targets that uh, started off with the Morrison government and then were inherited by the Albanese government. Now we've got mad Chris Bowen running around the country making all sorts of promises. And Jim Chalmers, he's clearly saying there, well, we're going to intervene more aggressively. How much of a worry do you reckon that is? This is massive, and this is one of the reasons why our MLC in Victoria, uh, Ricky Lee Tyrrell, has actually put legislation up to protect farmland against these renewable resources that want to take over perfect prime agricultural land. This is a, a serious issue, not just in Victoria, but right across the whole country. I've seen it as I did a trip from Queensland through New South Wales and into Victoria, where these issues are taking place. So unless somebody stands up and protects farmers' rights, like One Nation, nobody else is going to do it. And at this point, Steve, that means this Labor government have committed one and a half trillion dollars to fast track this renewable energy pledge, because that's the prediction of money that needs to be injected. Now, I don't know about those people sitting at home, but we've, we're approaching one trillion dollars worth of debt as a country right now. Think about two and a half times that debt. You're paying for it, I'm paying for it, and that means your taxes have got to go up. So if we're going to super, super uh, put this on steroids, so to speak, look out, pay for it in the long run, or we're going to go through some massive blackouts. Luke Grant, when you pick apart that speech that Chalmers gave yesterday and he talks about greater intervention, I mean, you've done enough uh, miles on Talkback Radio to know that uh, the community really do rely on local government largely to look after planning and they know they can go and complain if there's an issue. That read to me like the federal government with their state Labor mates as premiers are going to intervene in the planning process and they're going to say to farmers, well, bad luck, mate, we're going to stick 500 hectares of solar panels there or 25 of these uh, wind turbines on your property and you can't do anything about it. It feels like it, Pricey. Good to see you again, mate. You know, there's almost something maniacal about the response. I mean, just bear with me here, but big picture politics, and it shouldn't be, but it is. So they, the government copped a massive uh, beating at the hands of the referendum, at the hands of the Australian people. So they couldn't, they couldn't land that. Now, this is front and centre, what the government came to power with, what the Teal's obviously backed. If they can't land, if they, if they can't land this, as much as we don't vote out a first-term government, they are in all sorts. So I think your observations and I think our concerns are right, that they'll try and just go right over the top of everyone here. They'll spare no expense and they'll do everything they can to get this done. I think it's absolute madness. It's ridiculous. And to think back to what James was saying, we're going to sacrifice land from which we get food to land they're going to yep. uh, pollute with, uh, with wind towers and, mate, absolute madness. But I'm with you. I think they're going to go over the top, but I think it's very dangerous. James, you're there in Yapoon. I mean, we just saw some shots of uh, wind turbines based offshore. There'll be an argument from some of these uh, energy companies, and I know most of this investment's coming from, from uh, overseas, that don't worry, we're going to stick them 20k offshore out in the ocean. Uh, do we buy that argument? Are they any better, any better uh, to be placed out in the, in the sea rather than on, on shore? Because I, I imagine if, you know, I look over your shoulder there at that coastline, that beautiful coastline, do you really want those wind turbines stuck out there behind you? Well, I think you can tell there's plenty of wind here at Yapoon, but the last thing locals want are wind turbines, whether it be out at sea on our Great Barrier Reef or whether it be on the hills here in Yapoon. That's, that's not what people want. And they're going to get some bloody big arguments. I see uh, around Newcastle there, One Nation are one of the only few parties yep. out there championing the, the cause of those people who are saying, no, we don't want this, from fishermen to environmentalists to those people who love whales to those people who love dolphins. 
they're all getting behind parties like ours who can see no sense in putting wind turbines out at sea. We can see investors already saying, ah, no, this is not worth it. We're not getting the return on investment for this. They're not putting the money behind it. But you've got halfwits like, like Chris Bowen out there making these announcements. They are half-thought <laughs> announcements only to make sure they tick the box on environmental credentials. It doesn't stack up, Steve. The Australian people are starting to see through all this huff and puff of this Labor government and the coalition who implemented net zero as well. Don't forget, they're partially to blame for this, but Labor, again, are putting our renewable uh, situation on steroids and it's going to cost every Australian.